G'day guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Matilda by Harry Styles, which is a beautiful acoustic tune. Now I'm gonna teach you two different ways of playing this song. The first method is the studio version with finger picking, but it is detuned. And the second method is a standard tuning and easy strummed version if the first method is too difficult for you. The guitar I'm playing in this video is the Fender Acoustasonic Player Telecaster. If you want to find out more, there's a link in the description below. Now, if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve any guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Let's jump into the lesson. So first off, I'm going to teach you the studio version, and we will need to detune our guitar to open D6 tuning. So there's three strings we'll need to detune. First off, the low E string, is gonna go down to a D. So it should sound like that. Now the second string we need to detune is the G string. The G string will go down half a step to an F sharp. And the third string we detune is the high E string, which will also go down to a D. So our guitar will be tuned D, A, D, F sharp, B, and D. Okay, so let's start with the intro, which is the trickiest part to play in this song, but it's also the most fun to play if you can get it and sounds beautiful. Now, if this intro is too difficult for you, I'll teach you a simplified version later on. So we're gonna start with that index finger around about the second fret because we're gonna to need to slide that up to the fifth fret of our fifth string in a second. But we'll hit the open sixth string with our thumb and then we'll hit the fifth string with our thumb and then quickly slide up to the fifth fret. So one and, and then with our index finger, we'll pluck the fourth string. Then we'll go to the fifth string with our thumb. So those first four plucks, one, two, and. So we're gonna pluck everything at eighth notes. One and two and three and four and we're always gonna pluck on those subdivisions. What you should also do is have your middle finger ready and resting right underneath the second string. Because at this point, we're gonna take our pinky finger and we're gonna play a natural harmonic. So what you'll do is you'll lightly rest your pinky finger on the fret strip dividing seventh and eighth frets. Now, if you just rest your finger there and pluck that string, you'll get that nice natural harmonic. What you also wanna do is ensure that your index finger is not touching that string. So make sure your index finger is curled there as you lightly touch that string with your pinky finger and you'll get that natural harmonic. After we hit that natural harmonic, you'll go back to the bass note with your thumb and then with your pinky finger, just move it up to the third string. So you're lightly touching the third string with your pinky finger in the same spot. It's the metal strip dividing seventh and eighth frets. And you'll pluck that natural harmonic and back to the bass note. So the last four notes. Now, again, you don't wanna be pushing your pinky finger down, you just wanna to lightly touch the string. And in total, the first bar will sound like this. One, two, and three, and four, and... For our second bar, you'll shift your index finger up to the fifth fret of the sixth string. So we're gonna pluck that note, and then with your middle finger, get ready to hammer onto the fifth fret of the fifth string. So hit that fifth string and hammer on. Then with your index finger, pluck the fourth string, and we go back to the bass note with our thumb. So the first four notes, one and two and. Your middle finger will be underneath the third string ready to go, and we're gonna be doing some more harmonics. So your pinky finger will reach over and it'll lightly touch the third string here, the seventh fret. So the fret strip dividing seventh and eighth fret. Lightly touch that and we'll pluck that harmonic back to the bass note and then pinky finger goes up to the fourth string. We're gonna pluck that with our index finger and back to the bass note. So the last four notes. And the bar in total. One and two and three and four and. Next we move on to the third bar, which is almost identical to our second bar, except we're changing our root note. So we're gonna play a shape like this. So ring finger goes onto the seventh fret of the sixth string, and our index finger is gonna be the one hammering onto the fifth fret of the fifth string. So again, hit the root note, then the fifth string with your thumb, and hammer on with your index finger. Pluck the open fourth string with your index finger, 
and then go back to the bass note with your thumb. So that's the first four notes. One and two and. Then with our pinky finger, we're gonna reach that seventh fret harmonic on the second string. And then back to the bass note and then go to the seventh fret harmonic on the third string and back to the bass note. So the last four notes. And again, it's really important here that your index finger doesn't interfere and touch any of the second and third strings. Otherwise, your harmonics won't ring out. So your index finger needs to be arched over those strings so that doesn't touch them. And the third bar in total. One and two and three and four and. And the fourth bar is identical to the third bar. And that's it for the first line of tab, which sounds like this. Now the second line of tab is identical, except for the fourth bar, which changes a tiny bit. So for the fourth bar, we're going to start with the same first five plucks. So one and two and. But then we'll do a harmonic up at the seventh fret of the first string. So you'll need to reach your pinky and hit the seventh fret harmonic on that first string. So it's the fret strip dividing seventh and eighth fret. And the final bar, one and two and three and four and. So that's it for the intro, which sounds like this. Now, what I teach you in this first line of verse number one can be used as a substitute for the intro. So let's dig into verse number one. Now, for our finger picking, your thumb will take care of the sixth and fifth strings, and your index and middle finger will take care of the fourth and third strings, respectively. So for the first bar, we're just going to fret nothing. It's going to be all open, and we're going to pluck sixth, fifth, fourth, and then back to the bass note. So one and two and and then we're gonna pluck third string, bass note, fourth string, bass note. And the bar in total, one and two and three and four and. That's gonna be our typical picking pattern here for the verse. And all we're gonna do is change the chord shapes for each bar. So that's the first bar. For the second bar, we're just putting our index finger on the fifth fret of the sixth of the string, but we're plucking the exact same strings at eighth notes, one and two and three the third bar we're doing this shape that we had for the intro so ring finger on the seventh fret of the sixth string index on the fifth fret of the fifth string one and two and three and four and and then for the fourth bar it's back to the same thing as the second bar so that's the first line of tab for the verse but also a substitute for the intro if you want something simpler to play so in total for the first line of tab for the verse from number one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So for the first one, we're gonna play that first line through three times. And then for the second line of tab, it's almost the same except for the final bar. So for the final bar, we're gonna hit that fifth fret of the sixth string. And with our pinky finger, we're gonna bar that across the fret strip dividing seventh and eighth frets. Again, we're not pushing down, we're just lightly touching those top three strings. So the first, second and third strings. And we're gonna pluck all of them with our index, middle and ring finger like that. And again, it's natural harmonics. So the final bar, one and two and three and four and so the second line of tab for verse number one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, so next we move on to chorus number one, which is pretty simple because we've 
learnt most of it. So the first line of tab is the same as the first line of tab for the verse. Really nice and easy, we we'll relearnt that. For the second line of tab, we change things up at the third bar. So the first two bars are the same. But then we'll go up to this shape here. So we're gonna call this our B minor shape. So middle and ring finger on the ninth frets of the sixth and fifth string. Now we're gonna change up the picking pattern a tiny bit. You don't have to, you can continue on with the original picking pattern. But this is one part of the song where I feel the pattern does change. So let's just implement it. Now it's still plucking out eighth notes, but we're gonna go sixth string, fifth string, third and fourth. And we're gonna play that twice. So one and two and three and four and... And then we'll go back to this shape and we're gonna play the exact same picking pattern. And that's it for chorus number one, which sounds like this. Next we get to the break, which is really simple because it's the first line of tab for the intro, which we've already learned, so nothing new there. Now for verse number two, we're just gonna play something very similar to verse number one. Now in the studio recording, the picking pattern actually changes, but I'm gonna keep things simple and I'm going to stick to the same picking pattern that we had in verse one. Now in the studio recording, if you're curious, the pattern changes, but what's important to really note is that the rhythm doesn't change. And what I mean by that is the guitar is still being plucked at eighth notes. So let's take this open chord shape. Our picking pattern is one and two and three and four and... But you could pluck any picking pattern, so the strings in any order, as long as you started with the root note, if you plucked any strings in any order of that chord shape with these four strings, at eighth notes, it would still sound fine. So one and two and three and four and still is fine as well, or one and two and three and four and. So that's just what I want you to understand that the rhythm and the timing is probably more important than the actual strings you hit. But I'm gonna stick to the picking pattern that we had in verse number one, just for simplicity. Now the only difference between verse two and verse one is at the end. So for this eighth bar, we're just going to hit this chord and let that ring out. So middle and ring finger on the fifth frets of the sixth and fifth string and then index finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. Now for chorus number two, again, some of these picking patterns change. There's a lot of improvising going on, so there's not a typical pattern being used again and again. But for simplicity, I'm gonna be using the picking pattern that I showed in chorus number one. Now, chorus two does differ a little bit though because for the first half of this, we're just gonna be strumming chords and holding them out. So for the first line of tab, we're just going to hit our open D5, so the first three strings. And then we're gonna do a G5, so middle and ring finger on the fifth frets. And our D5 slash A, and then back to our G5. For the fifth bar, we go back to our D, and then G5, and then we'll do a B minor, so we'll go up to the ninth fret, and back to the G5. And each of those chords is strummed and held out for a full bar. And then the second and third line of tab are basically the tab shown in chorus one. Next we move on to the bridge, which is just chords. So we're gonna start with the G major seven. So I'm gonna play it like this. It's, it's a similar shape to what we had earlier in the song. So we're gonna strum this and hold it out for two bars. And then we're gonna play a D. So we just need to have our middle finger on the third fret of the second string. We're gonna hit all the strings. Now at the very end of this bar, we're gonna hit the open third string. And then for the next bar, we're gonna pluck that third fret of the second string and then go down to the second fret. So the D, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Then we go back to our G major seven. Hold that out for two bars and then back to our D for two bars. And then we're gonna play an F sharp minor slash C sharp. So it's basically the same shape as an F chord shifted up one fret and then we don't hit the root note here. So you can take your index finger down to just bar across the second frets of the second and first string. 
and we're just strumming from the fifth string onwards. So that's F sharp minor slash C sharp. Hold that out for two bars. And then we play an E minor seven. So to play that, our middle ring and pinky finger will go on the second frets of the sixth, fifth and fourth string and index finger on the first fret of the third string. We're gonna strum all those strings. Now, if you're wondering why these chord shapes look a little different to what you're used to, it's because our guitar is detuned. So that's the first line of tab, which sounds like this. And then for the second line tab, we start implementing some strumming. So we're gonna start with the D chord and we're gonna be strumming a down, down, up, up, down, up strumming pattern. So once for the D, and then once for the F sharp minor slash C sharp, and then two bars of the G major seven. And we're gonna repeat that twice for the second line of chords. For the third line of chords, we start with our D for one strumming pattern, then an F sharp seven. So this is a little different. We're gonna take our middle and ring finger and put them on the fourth fret and pinky finger on the fourth fret of the third string and index finger bars across the second fret. So that's our F sharp seven and then G major seven and then E seven. So middle and ring finger on the second frets of the sixth and fifth fret and pinky finger on the second fret of the third string. I'm gonna strum everything there and that's our E7. So these first four bars, down, down, up, and then we're gonna play a D, an F sharp minor seven, and then when we get to the G, we're just gonna strum that and hold it out. So that's it for the bridge. There's a lot of chords going on here, but if you follow along with the playthrough at the end of the lesson, then you should be able to get an idea of it. So I'm just gonna play the second and third line of tabs now. And the final thing to learn is the final chorus, which is just two lines of tab here. And it's pretty simple. It's those chords that we've just learnt in the bridge. So we're gonna start with our G major seven, hold that out for two bars, and then a D for one bar, and then our F sharp minor seven slash C sharp for one bar. And that first line of chords is played through three times. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and so that's played through three times. And then for the final line of tab, G major seven for one bar, our F sharp minor seven slash C sharp. And then we're playing an E seven sus two. So your index finger will bar across the second fret of the sixth, fifth and fourth string. Our middle finger will go on the third fret of the second string and pinky finger on the fourth fret of the first string. And you'll have the third string muted. So it's a bit of a tricky chord but that's how we end the song. So one, two, three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four. So those are all the parts for the studio version. Okay, so now let's learn an easy strummed version in standard tuning. So for the intro, the verse, and the break, we have a really nice and easy four chord chord progression. We have a D chord, then a G, then an A sus four. So keep your ring finger on the third fret of the second string and put your index and middle finger on the second frets of the fourth and third string. And we're just strumming from the fifth string onwards. So that's A sus four and then back to G. So those are our four chords and we're gonna play a strumming pattern that goes like this. Down, down, up, up, down, up. 
and then succession down, down up up down up down down up up down up you're gonna play that once for each chord and then easy intro verse and break will sound like this Next we get to the chorus, which is really nice and simple. There's just two lines of chords here. The first line of chords is identical to the intro, verse and break that we just learned. And the second line of chords is almost the same, except instead of an A sus4, we're gonna play a B minor seven. So it's the same as our A sus4 shape, except our index finger goes up to the second fret of the fifth string. And again, we're strumming just from the fifth string onwards. So that's our B minor seven. So the chorus just sounds like this. The next part to learn is the bridge, which has five lines of chords. So for the first two lines of chords, we're just gonna be strumming chords and holding them out. So we're gonna start with a G and a D. And those first two chords are held out for two bars each. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that first line of chords is repeated through twice. And then for the second line of chords, we're gonna play an F sharp minor. So it's barring the index finger across the second fret and ring and pinky finger on the fourth frets of the fifth and fourth string. So that's gonna be held out for two bars and then also an E minor seven, which looks like this. So index and middle on the second frets of the fifth and fourth and ring and pinky on the third frets of the first and second. And that's held out for two bars. So the second line of tab, one, two, For the third line of chords, we have D, F sharp minor, and G. And this is where we're gonna start implementing a strumming pattern. The same one that we had in our intro and verse. So it'll sound like this. So that third line of chords is played through twice. For the fourth line of chords, we have a D. Then we go to an F sharp seven. So it's the same as our F sharp minor, except we lift our pinky finger and middle finger goes on the third fret of the third string. Then we have G and then an E seven. So it's the same as an E major chord, but we lift our ring finger. So the fourth line of chords. And for the fifth line of chords, it's D to F sharp minor. And then when we go to the G, we just strum it and hold it out. So. so that's it for the bridge. And if you want to see that in context, then go to the playthrough at the end of this lesson. Next, we get to the final chorus, which is simple. There's two lines of chords here. So we're just strumming each chord and holding it out. For our first line of chords, it's the G and then D and then F sharp minor. Now the G is held out for two bars and the D and F sharp minor held out for one bar. So the first line of chords, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that first line of chords is repeated through three times. And for the second line of chords, we have G, then F sharp minor, and then E minor add nine. So it's the same as an E minor, but we add the second fret of the first string. And that ends the song. So the final line of chords. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And those are all the parts to the standard tuning easy version. So now I'll be doing two playthroughs of the song. The first playthrough will be the studio version and the second playthrough will be the easy strummed version in standard tuning. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to these playthroughs. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
can throw a party full of everyone you know And not invite your family cause they never showed you love You don't have to be sorry for living and growing
throw a party for love Anyone you know You can start a family You will always show love You don't have to be sorry For doing it all your own You can let it go You can throw a party for love Anyone you know You can start a family You will always show love You don't have to be sorry No Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzeritohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.